I messaged my entire public Discord with now over six thousand members to send me 2v2 replays from every rank in Rocket League. Today we're going to go from lowest to highest rank in order to expose the mistakes that every rank makes in Rocket League. So no matter what rank you are, I promise there's going to be some stuff at your rank and above your rank that you might not expect in this video. Also, since I've seen a ton of messages about you guys wanting to get coached, but either, you know, not being 18 plus or not being able to join my private coaching program, huge shout out to my editor and social media guy, Winston, because we just finished up setting an entirely new free coaching program in my Discord. That's right, my public Discord now has a complete roster of Rocket League coaches ranging all the way up to SSL in rank, coaching guys like you completely free of charge on my Discord. I'm so, so excited to be rolling this out. So hey, if you're new here or just wanna get better, you can get access to free coaching down in my public Discord in the link below. That's all I wanted to say for now. So enjoy the video, guys. All right, so we have one submission of 80 people that submitted. We have one from a gold three. Currently, we are going to be watching Giro's. Oh, no. I can't watch these bad camera settings. Let's go to somebody else. Here, we're going to see. Oh, no. This is mistake number one. This is a decision-making mistake. We have to say this in 2021. No dedicated goalies. Don't, don't play dedicated goalie. If you are, Rocket League is not, you don't have positions in Rocket League. Everybody's dependent on boost. So if you're sitting in that, you're making your rotations really inefficient because you're never going to have boost. So here you need to rotate out, grab boost, pie joy, and then come back around to net. This is criminal. And here we just see pie joy just sitting under the ball. Oh. This happens so much at low ranks. Okay, we're going to call this a mistake. At low ranks, if you don't have the mechanics, you need to take wide turns. Do not flip straight into the center and try to cut this ball off. You don't have the mechanics. Instead, go around. Wide turns. Wide turns are key at the low ranks. Just be patient and wait for your shot. Do not drive directly under the ball. I'm gonna rotate around. Just stop rotating short. Just make a wide turn. Oh no, he missed the open. No, he misses the open. No, stop. And he cuts his teammate off. Mm. Make it stop. No. No, okay. On the plat. On the plat. Good news is, I feel like these days, plat is, is the equivalent of, like, what silver used to be. So, hopefully we'll get through this quickly, and plat 2 will have a better showing. We're gonna watch our plat 2 player here. I didn't watch kickoff, so we'll excuse the kickoff. The player's going to rotate around. Get off to a good start. All right. Our plat two players waiting center. Making some progress already. Good stuff. We'll keep watching. No. Why do people do this? Why would you back up after kickoff? Okay. Strike one. Not allowed. Because you see the ball comes out and then the player's just like, what are, we, what are we doing? We're all the way back on our side of the field. No designated goalies. You guys know this. All right. Mistake number two, flying for this ball does absolutely nothing. There's no situation where you should fly for this ball. And the way you know whether or not you need to go for this ball is once it goes up, teammates rotating behind. There's nobody on the opposing team threatening a shot here. Flying up and hitting this ball does absolutely nothing for your team except waste boost and just give the opponent possession. That's mistake number two. Oh no, just getting flat footed on that. That's mistake number three. In these situations, you want to shadow your opponent. So you want to move up here and then start driving with them. When you're driving with the ball, matching the speed of the ball, it gives you more time to think as the attack is coming. But power siding here and sitting still makes it really easy for the opponent to put the ball over your head. That's mistake number three. Never sit still in net. You should either be challenging the ball or shadowing with the opponent. Three strikes. All right, diamond two. 
Hopefully the mechanics are gonna start to improve. Let's get into some proper analysis. We're watching Eduardo now. Still in diamond, not flipping on the kickoffs, but you know, that's all right. We'll, we'll say it's fine. We're gonna watch some Eduardo gameplay. Diamond two, we're elevating here. Starting to make some better decisions, not committing here. A, a slight error, something I would have done differently here. Um, if you don't plan, if you're not going for a shot, there's no reason to jump here. So you can just knock this ball up against the wall. Don't even use jump and then wait for it to come down and follow it up. I think that's the easiest play. Not necessarily a, a decision making mistake, but we, we won't count that, but you could easily do something better there. And here on defense, the ball's coming across the field. You're a 47 boost. You should uh, you should just grab this boost on the left side and 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 move around. It's clear you're not going to be able to help your teammate here. There's no point rotating through the center of the field with no boost. Here you just need to grab boost and get back around. No no reason to just drive through the field here because then when you get back on this ball, you're going to be no boost or low boost. Now we're going to see the player rotate back. And no, stop this sitting still. You should never be sitting still in net. If you're ever sitting still in net, you're doing something wrong. This is just if, like you're just a sitting duck here. Instead, what you want to be doing, two options here. If your teammate's not there, you drive up and you turn around. So you start shadowing, start defending the net. Or B, if you see your teammate up, like in this scenario, just come back around. The problem is sitting still in net here. When this ball comes down, the entire net is behind Eduardo. It doesn't work. You can't sit still in the net like this. Like if if players know how to just put a shot on that, luckily Dragon YT is trying to be uh, the, uh, the first killer. I, I don't know. Strike number two. I will say the wave dashes off the wall are getting better. The mechanics are clearly better on Eduardo. We're seeing a rotation out, even following the boost pads in the center. And ooh, a little bit of... A little bit of a short route here. You could easily just go around power side, go for a shot on net, possibly. Fortunately, it gets bonked by the teammate. We're gonna say that wasn't Eduardo's fault. And we'll watch from here. Oh no. Why is Eduardo challenging? Oh no. Pretty self-explanatory. You're moving here. You clearly don't know what's going on. Your teammate is still kind of following the ball. Their guy is off to the back here. Just chill. Just don't go for that ball. Turn back to your net. Wait. Wait for it to simmer down. He kind of gets bumped by his teammate. No, that's just, that's just bad. That's just bad. Eduardo down. Now we're moving up to C2 though. We're gonna see some play from Vudrock. Here, uh, this is, this is definitely a mistake. This is just panicking. Uh, ball over ball over defense Vudrock's teammate is clearly here you have three boost just turn back trust your teammate if you don't trust your teammate you put your whole team in a, in a worse situation because now blue's gonna get ball you're sitting on the goal line with 27 boost and you almost get scored on and, and now you're just crippling yourself because of it little things trust your teammate that's mistake number one you can't like can't go for that ball uh, not, not allowed and we're gonna go back to net, rotate around. This is good. I like trying to move the ball over to the boost. It's definitely a smart decision there. Playing back, we're noticing the C2 player pick up some small boosts. I like it. Not wasting his boost, chasing the ball, just being patient, controlling. Huh, look what happens. Look what happens when, when you listen. Of course he couldn't hear me earlier, but I mean, patience, not wasting boost letting the opponent throw the ball and then making a soft touch huh and then they just instantly get a goal this guy's on to something look at how he's following the boost pads this has this wasn't happening up until this rank oh wait did i get to oh but his teammate boots the ball away even in champ two yeah it's not Vudrock's fault he probably thought his teammate was gonna hit that but he just totally Drives past the ball. We're not, we're not going to blame Budrock for that. He's still at one mistake. Here we're going to see Budrock rotate around. Double back to gold. It's pretty good. He gets the ball in the open. No, stop throwing it. Stop throwing it. Here, like, okay, so maybe this is a mechanical failure. So we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But in this situation, you get this ball. 
This guy is way back. This guy is way back. What you could do here is maybe try to place it like, like if you want to hit this ball hard, that's fine. But you got to get around it and power shot it like up here for it to be useful. Just hitting it straight forward in a line doesn't do anything. And then once you do, you got to get out. No, he doesn't realize he has no boost. This is bold going for this ball with 12 boost. I think this is a mistake. It just leaves your teammate behind and stuck in an awkward situation. Because you get a 50-50 there, but then literally it's a 2v1 instantly after, right? This is the problem like with taking disadvantageous 50s. Do not take 50s in the opposing corner. Just don't do it. It's, it's just a bad idea. Use drive challenges, use neutral jumps. Do not full send into the corner and leave your teammate back like this. It doesn't work. That's mistake number two. Luckily, we're going to see a quick rotation back. Grab corner boost. Plays it soft to himself. Starting to go for some more two-touch plays. You see the progression. Not bad, not bad. And here, just once again, chill. Your teammate's up. Just ba just bail out here. Just, just totally bail out. Just leave. Don't even turn center. Because if this ball comes center, there's no way you're going to get an angle on it. Just turn this way and bail around. Just get all the way around this play. Because then when the ball does come, you're not in a position to score it. It doesn't work. And now you're leaving your teammate once again in a 2v1. I'm going to call that mistake number three because this is a really, really common high level mistake. Just turn back. Just play safe. There's no reason to force that ball. Wait till it's back in the center and try to take advantageous 50s rather than disadvantageous ones. Seem fair? Okay, and the final rank that I feel like I can accurately, I, I can fairly analyze, GC2. I'm above GC2 right now, and I'm not SSL. So if that tells you what rank I am, spoiler alert. But we'll watch from Drezo's perspective, talk about what's going on at GC2 lobbies that is not going on in the others. Clearly, the pace of play is already way, way higher as you can see, but what are they doing? What are the actual decision-making things that they're doing? Besides pre-jumping here. Grabbing boost, turning back, checking the opponent. Goes up for a challenge, but instantly turns back, lands, and is playing defensive. Clears the ball to the side, instantly is gonna turn back on the landing. And it has, and look at this. Here's what I wanna point out. Has 100 boost, and is actually using it not burning boost picking up boost and not burning it so that way you have the ability to go for higher level plays a lot of lower rank players will just burn boost and then even if they wanted to go for a double tap they don't have enough to finish it here he has 85 boost notice how he's not burning it this is actually good look at this when he's in his corner rather than jumping he makes a soft touch and then goes for a shot he ends up scuffing the shot but the idea there is correct this player, okay, that's got to be a mistake. This player is doing really, really well, but he's 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 making his plays before the opponent challenge challenges. This side flick is a reactionary flick, so you shouldn't really be using the side flick if you can see the opponent. The only situations where you want to use the side flick are when they're already challenging or if they disappear from your vision. But here, this guy's in his vision the whole time. That's a little bit of, bit of a panic. It's got to be a mistake. Good news is we're rotating around, picking up boost. I probably would have liked to see him go for the ball there, but it's all good. Car control is definitely improved. Getting behind the teammate, waiting for boost. Rotating up, slowing down when the play slows down. Waiting for his teammate, turning back. I mean, all this movement is just much more intuitive. Oh, unfortunately, dog gets in the way. I like the rotation out there. Oh, don't cut this. Don't try to cut this ball back up. Yeah, I, I would say this is a mistake. This is technically a mistake only because he could get challenged at any time in the middle here. In these situations, you just want to take the ball to your back wall and regroup. There's no point trying to flick the ball past here because even if you get it past one, you see the problem. You know, the, the other guy has a shot on that. This is definitely a mistake. Just because you can cut the ball back upfield, I see this happen all the time, doesn't mean you should. The safest place to take this ball is take it up the wall. You have 100 boost, just dish it up here. You'll be first to it. That way your teammate can grab boost. Once he grabs boost, you take the ball off the wall and you try to move it back up the field. Cutting it up the center here doesn't work because your teammate still has to grab boost and you 
have to push through two on a weird angle, it's never going to happen. They could have easily been punished for that. That's mistake number two. And just, this is, this is how you play defense in the corner. He challenges, applies pressure, lets the other guy throw, takes it up the wall, and then uses the ball's momentum to clear it. Yes, this is what you want to do. Hits the ball up, goes for a bump. Oh, that was so close. He had the right idea. Once he popped it, he saw the opponent. Bang. I'm so happy. We've come a long way since, since the first replay. When is the last draw going to come? He's playing pretty well. Here, just don't flip. Oh, this is perfect. This was perfect defense. Here, this is this is the last mistake because this actually cost people goals a lot at the high ranks. The final straw, going after this ball, it's really tempting to want to flip into it. You're like, oh, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to hit it over him. You're not. You're not going to flip and hit it over him. Stay close to it. Take it down to the ground with the boost you have. And then 50-50. Do not try to flip into this ball and try to hit it over him because you won't. You're just going to throw the ball up to the opposing team. He, he luckily gets a good bump, but if he didn't get lucky there with the bump, he could have been in a tough spot. It's going to end up working out, and that will be a forfeit from Orange Team. Hope that was helpful. That was the 2v2 mistakes of every rank in Rocket League. Other than that, though, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace, guys.